To get better at PvP in Tarkov, you really have to understand all the mechanics. Like, why was my screen getting all blurry here and my gun was bouncing around? What was that? Aim punch. Are you struggling to stay alive during PvP? Missing most of your shots after you get hit and have weird recoil patterns? Aim punch. Dying almost instantly after you peek around a wall? Oh my god. What was that? Nah, that's not aim punch. That's net code issues. Hello everyone, this is CZTL, and today we're going to be going over the detailed effects, contributing factors, and ways to overcome... Oh my god, what was this? Aim punch. So how does aim punch actually work? There are two components which occur when you get shot. Camera punch and actual aim punch. You know this if you overlay the frame just before you get shot with roughly 100 milliseconds after you get shot, which is the peak of your aim punch. You'll notice the spot that you are aiming and where the crosshair appears on the screen is different. After that, your aim will typically recenter 300 milliseconds after the initial hit, followed by your camera around 500 milliseconds. The only outlier to this is when you get hit in the head, where it seems to take 1 to 1.5 seconds for the camera to return and your crosshair to return to the initial point. But the exact numbers are difficult to determine due to the concussion effect. Your aim recovers faster than your camera, most likely because there is more camera aim punch than actual weapon aim punch in every test that I performed. One final thing to note. During the camera aim punch, your view almost appears to zoom in in certain circumstances and then zoom back out after you recover from aim punch, almost as if your vision is getting narrowed. Now that we know the mechanics of how aim punch works in Escape from Tarkov, what are some of the things that affect it? A bit of background here. I did not pull all of this out of my butt. I did extensive controlled testing to come up with this information, but I'm guessing a majority of you don't care for the raw numbers, so I'll keep this video high level and relevant to your rates. So first, does the area of the body that you get shot impact the amount of aim punch that you get? Why, yes it does. In terms of raw aim punch, legs give you the least amount of aim punch, followed by stomach, followed by thorax, head, and finally arms. How much does it affect your recoil? Based off my testing, if you're getting hit in between each shot and have a gun with extremely low recoil, like the Vector, at 10 meters, compared to not getting aim punched, it increases recoil roughly 1.25 times for the legs, 1.5 times for the stomach, 1.75 times for the thorax, 2.5 times for the head, and 3.2 times for the arms. Do guns with higher recoil have more aim punch? Nope, not really. The bullet spread of different guns was proportional to the difference in recoil stats. Recoil testing can be fairly imprecise, so let's move on. The rest of my results will focus purely on client side aim punch and camera recoil, which I can concretely measure. Well, how did those move on average? Aim moved 25 centimeters and camera recoil moved 60 centimeters on average at 10 meters. Next, does going prone, crouching, or standing affect the amount of camera recoil or aim punch that you get? Surprisingly not. I had consistent results across all result sets with a few different weapon setups. Do lasers move less and give you less camera recoil than you get while ADSing? What do you think? Nope. And I was quite surprised with this one. I had several different tests and the client beside position of the laser did not move more than my crosshair while ADSing. It actually appeared that aim punch was slightly more with lasers because the FOV that you get while not ADSing. Does Ergo affect aim punch? Nope. I compared a similar weight 100 Ergo RD704 against a comparable weight Vector with much less Ergo, and it had no noticeable difference. Do painkillers affect the amount of aim punch you get? Well, they don't affect aim punch, but if you get shot in the leg and you're moving, your crosshair is going to be bouncing everywhere. So, something to keep in mind, but no. What about the weapon weight of the gun you're using? Nope. It did not appear to do anything for aim punch. Uh, there seems to be a consistent theme here. How about the amount of weight that you're carrying? Why, yes, that did appear to affect aim punch, but only for arm and headshots. I tested identical builds, one PMC weighing 83 kilograms and the other one weighing 30 to 35 kilograms. So, does armor class affect it? I'm not sure about helmets, because that's hard to get as much data as I wanted on it, for obvious reasons. But for body armor? Not the three types that I tested. Does gun length matter? I don't know if you can get much longer than the MP153, 
but, um, no. Haven't you heard that size doesn't matter? Do pistols have less aim punch? No, not really. A little less aim punch, but a lot more camera recoil. What about side strafing? Yes, it does appear to affect aim punch, although the camera aim punch was slightly lower. I didn't account for the movement of the player, but the aim punch only happens within roughly the first 100 milliseconds of being shot. What about different bullet calibers? Yes, 100%. 308 rounds seem to have a much higher camera aim punch and slightly higher raw aim punch. LPVOs? Nope. Other types of top mounted sights? Not really when you count for the differences in FOB. What about sights mounted on different areas of the gun? Front mounted sights showed no difference on both the AK series and the target ring for the MP153. Canted sights appeared to have more camera aim punch, roughly 1.5 times, which made me really sad. What about those delta points you put on top of your LPVO? Those did have more aim punch. Between the long ADS time and the aim punch, those will not serve you well close quarters. Finally, does DLSS or FSR matter? Not for the initial aim punch, but DLSS does seem to take longer to recover from camera aim punch. FSR also takes longer to recover on balance, but not as long as DLSS. So how can you use this information to improve your PvP? Hit fire when it makes sense to. If you get shot and have the opportunity to get back into cover, let your aim and vision recover. 50 hours of footage, hundreds of screenshots, and countless hours of data analysis should be worth hitting the like and subscribe buttons. So let me know that you want more in-depth research videos like this in the future. If you're having problems seeing people through a dark blurry screen when you get aim punched, try using a flashlight or increasing your gamma and make that hard decision about using DLSS or FSR. Toss your bag in the ground before fights. Candid sights and top mounted red dots aren't as great regarding aim punch. They may not be worth your money if you're dying a lot to aim punch. Use larger rounds to make your opponent suffer more aim punch. Those are all the things that I could think of while testing. Let me know in the comments what you think and if there are any tests you are curious about how aim punch is effective. In the background, you probably noticed my testing analysis and methodology. Let me know if you think there are ways that it could be improved. Also, you can find my Discord link in the description if you want to connect. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and haven't watched my netcode breakdown, check it out here. Before that, smash the like out of that shit button, subscribe to stay one step ahead of your enemies, and I will see you on the battlefield. CZTL out.